Hey guys, it's me Sneha and you're watching Cheat Sheet on the show today. It's an episode I've been wanting to do for the longest time. What really goes into the life and job of being a manager to some of the leading superstars in Bollywood? That's exactly what I'm going to find out with Jaya Saha, the head of talent at Collective Artists Network. So come join me. I don't think she's expecting me, so we're gonna... Hi Jaya! Hi. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. I, I really want to say up front that I could not have done this episode if you hadn't said yes. So thank you for being on Cheat Sheet. Thank you for doing this. <laughs> I'm nervous and I'm just again making a, a disclaimer. honest disclaimer that uh, slightly nervous. We are the people who are behind the camera. Uh, so to have three of them pointing at you is a, is a different experience <laughs> altogether. I'm, I'm going to write at the start, ask my YouTube comments to tell me who do you think Jaya manages? Because when I was doing like my, my research for this piece, my sense is that you maintain a really, really discreet profile. Yeah. There are no pictures of the actors you manage on your Instagram. There's nothing. What is the thought behind that? Um, we are genuinely the people who are behind the scene. Um, I genuinely, genuinely believe that it's always about the client. The client can be an actor, the client can be a director, it doesn't matter. It bodes well for us when you're behind the scene and not in front of the camera, I think somewhere because of the job that we do, the rooms that we sit in, it gets a little confusing uh, because of the attention that we get. So yeah, that's just one of my rules in my own head that do the work. That's it. That's good advice for anyone watching. <laughs> do the work. I actually want to do this walking around this yeah. really wonderful space that you have. Do a vibe check as we walk and talk yeah. if that's okay with you. Absolutely. This is a lovely space. Thank you for coming and welcome to the office. You're actually, it's a good thing that you've come in before like the crazy workday starts. Yeah. Because it's a fish market. <laughs> you probably sometimes can't hear your own voice. Oh my God. Uh, so yeah, we have about, I think close to about 120 people uh, in the Bombay office across two floors. Wow. Um, screaming for deals, screaming at people, screaming at each other. Crisis uh, management. Crisis management, whatever you call it. So, so let's talk about that a little bit. Let's start at the very beginning because of course we're talking to people who probably have no idea what your job really entails. Yeah. So what is the job of a celebrity manager? What all fall under your various KRA? So I mean we do everything, right? I can be really po polished and posh and tell you we are the business managers. Mm -hmm. uh, we look after the career aspect of things. Yeah. Um, revenue management, revenue generation, new opportunities across everything, across films, across digital, across brands, any possibility to make revenue and figure out the potential and unlock the potential for a client is what we do. But in addition to that, we're also managing people. Yeah, so, managing people and their vulnerabilities. So yeah, because we manage people who, of course, while the professional side is, we treat them like brands because each artist is a brand, right? That's, on, that's the only way you figure out how to monetize them and how to build them out. Mm -hmm. But these brands also happen to be people. So it's not like you can pick them up, put them wherever they, you want them to be. They have good days, they have bad days. So just managing all of that as well. Um, yeah, so sometimes we are part shrink, huh. sometimes we are part friend, sometimes we are, I don't know, part a lot of things. What is, um, how honest can you be with your talent? Like what's the hardest thing you've had to tell an actor? Wow, there are a lot of hard conversations you have because actors like everyone else, there's so many insecurities, there are so many feelings, they're constantly under the microscope which just makes life really, really hard for them. So, how honest can you be? I think you can be honest as long as you're kind. Um, it's not about just telling them the facts, but it's also understanding their perspective and where they are in life and putting information in the right context. I think that's where we come in or that's where the art of management comes in. What is the least glamorous thing about your job? There's nothing about a job that's glamorous. Oh, come on. 
It's not. It's I mean, are there a lot of perks? A hundred percent, right? You get to travel business class at a lot of times. You get to travel to amazing places. You're sitting with incredibly inspiring people. Uh, Gorgeous, might I add. And that. <laughs> uh, so you're in events which you probably, as a regular person, would have never got the opportunity. access. Yeah, yeah, access. But I don't think any of those things are glamorous, right? We are the guys who are sweating it out. We are the guys who are there an hour before any talent comes in. We are the guys who probably leave an hour after. So I don't think the job is glamorous. Does the job have incredible perks? A hundred percent. But the job also demands that much out of you because it's not a job, it's a lifestyle. Right? You're accessible all the time, you're thinking for another person, you're constantly putting another person's needs before yours. So it's a lifestyle, it's not a job. There's going to be a lot of curiosity around just that. Like, what are your work hours? Are Sundays off? Huh? <laughs> what does that mean? No, I'll, I'll be honest, as much as we try, like as an organization, we try to support each other and the employees as, as much as possible. So there's a hundred percent work from home, it's hybrid, uh, we don't have a leave policy at work but honestly we don't, the concept of Sundays off doesn't really exist. If you have work, you have work. If you're getting a call at 2 a.m. in the morning which is a stress call, you got to pick it up. Uh, you have to be accessible. Um, are you going to get fired if you don't pick up the 2 a.m. call? Probably not but that's where servicing comes in. Right? It is a 100% servicing role. So it demands a lot out of you. Like one of my things that I tell anyone when I'm interviewing them, if you have a partner and you want to do this, either you lose the partner because you won't have time or figure out how you're going to do it because the job has to come first as far as physical time and attention goes. That's just the requirement of the role. Yeah. So that's the downside of the perks that you get to experience at a 25, 30, 35. Um, yeah. Okay, very, very curiously. So what are these 2 a.m. calls usually like? I mean, it can be anything from someone's ticket not coming in for a 5 a.m. flight to uh -huh. uh, if there's a release tomorrow, there's some issue on the credit roll. It can literally be anything. I mean, yeah, it's not... Uh, bizarre personal stuff, it's all work related, but uh, it, it generally, it can be anything at all. But where does one draw the line between uh, personal and professional? Because you can be the shrink at some point as well, right? You always have to remember that it's a job. In the, in the sense, like, it's, it's weird, I think I'm contradicting myself. Um, you are there in a professional capacity with the people. Um, regardless of what you hear, regardless of what you're exposed to, the minute we forget that we are actually there in a professional capacity, I feel like that's where we start digging our graves a little bit. Mm. Um, you're there to fulfill a role and make their lives easier. You're, as a role, as a part of that journey, sometimes you evolve into a little bit more. Mm. But as lo if the business need is not being fulfilled, the personal relationship will never cover that up, right? The business need always, always comes first. Yeah. Um, yeah. Talk to me a little bit about this brand building. You said actors are brands and that is the truth of it. Yeah. But how does one go about, so say a talent walks in this door and says, I want to make something of my, of brand XYZ. Yeah. What would next steps be? I think it's about figuring, it's about understanding the talent and what they're dreams are right everyone doesn't want to become the number one actor the number one actress in the country no no <laughs> <laughs> and which is the beauty of it uh radhika Apte is a talent and she doesn't want to become hypothetically katrina right sure. that's not her ambition hmm. it's about understanding what the ambition is um understanding what they need <laughs> what is their authentic self and figuring out how we can polish that and make that into a brand. I think in today's day and age, people are really smart. They see through bullshit a lot. Um, so you can't create something which isn't there. Right? I can't take someone who doesn't hypothetically believe in sustainability 
and create Force a vegan people. brand out of them. Yeah. It doesn't work. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's genuinely about just figuring out who they are, what they believe in. Now, how can we take those qualities, polish them, make them the, for lack of a better uh, example, the shiniest version of that and put that out. Say you identify something that you think is the way to go with a particular actor. Mm -hmm. How often is that um, easy enough to convince? What's that conversation usually like with them? Uh, sometimes it goes really well. Hmm. And uh, I think the reason a lot of actors or talents, I won't only qualify and quantify it as actors, need us or need people like us is because they can't dream for themselves what we are dreaming for them. Right? Um, yes, everyone has goals about the kind of money they want to make, the kind of films they want to do, uh, the kind of films they want to direct or act or produce, whatever it is. But eventually, those are all action points. That's not the dream, hmm. right? That's not the poster or that's not the picture. So I think that's why they need a lot of us to sit down with them, understand where they are coming from, what is their background, what are their dreams, what are their ambitions. How can we take that and almost it's like a five year goal that in five years, that's where we want to, that's what we want to create. So if I take, say, for example, someone like a Janelia, who we worked with for the longest time, um, in the beginning of her career, we were very clear she was the, the bubblegum princess, for lack of a better word. And that was our journey to create that. And that separated her from everyone else who was trying to do different things. and. Till today, people remember her for being that cute, bubbly, all of that. And it works so well it for her. It works so well for her. So yeah. after Preeti Zinta, there was a space that, that, that bubblegum princess was a space that no one really came in and owned. So as opposed to getting her to compete with her other contemporaries who probably had other things going for them. Yeah. It was about, okay, that's authentic to you. Your, that smile and that persona just works. Yeah. Uh, so let's create this. Yeah. So the structure wise, does one person man manage one talent? Is that how it works? Um, not necessarily. It completely depends. I think it depends on the quantum of work there is on the talent. So there are managers who have anywhere between three to five talents. Wow. There are managers who are solo talents. It completely depends on the quantum of work. Yeah. So what happens on a day when two of your talents are on the same red carpet? We are running. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, we are running like, one second, we'll be back. <laughs> we are running. Wow, not glamorous, huh? Vijay, can you go? <laughs> can you just go? Can you just go? <laughs> I'm actually curious about the paparazzi culture. How much does that feature in this five-year game plan that you guys sort of chalk out? Is it true that managers tip off the paps from time to time? Well, managers, at least I can, I can answer for this organization. I can't answer for any other. We don't interact with the media. Uh, okay. It's a rule uh, because I think you need specific expertise to be able to handle that crowd, uh, which we don't have. Um, so all the media, PAP, interactions, whatever happens with the publicists. Mm. Uh, do sometimes PAPs get tipped off? I would think so because I feel like everyone's feeding off each other. Uh, it's all one community. So if they get content out of shooting them, it helps the PAPs. And somewhere for some artists, it helps them as well. Sure. So it's a mutually beneficial relationship. Yeah. What's the biggest uh, myth about your job that you'd like to bust? that it's glamorous, that it's glamorous, that it doesn't need thought, it doesn't need that much hard work, we are hanging out with actors, like it's just things like that are, like if you look at the West, right, I don't think anyone thinks uh, an agent or, a, or a, even an intern at CA or WME or any of these agencies is sitting around and hanging out with the actors. Right? So I don't understand why is the, is the belief prevalent for India. Uh, I actually do believe that Indian actors and talents do a lot more in a year. Uh, just because I think as a culture, Indians are hardworking, but like it's in our DNA that we have to struggle for everything. Work uh, for our part. Yeah, work <laughs> for our, that one rupee has to be earned. It's just in our DNA. Uh, so yeah, just it's not glamorous. 
it has a lot of perks um we are not hanging out with actors we are not socializing for a job you totally nullified my next question then because i wanted to, the main reason i lined up this interview was to just ask you what's the goss like how often do you get asked this at parties um so often i have lost friends right <laughs> i have lost friends because every time you enter anywhere and they think you they know you work with bollywood they're like who's dating who is What it is true happening? who's getting a divorce and i'm just like guys i'm not zoom but you know na how no see even if i know i have a employment contract which and has, a poker face yeah and a poker face and a confidentiality clause so no comments <laughs> so you're not going to give me sharukh's number no i can send it to you on the side <laughs> like on the sly as long as you don't tell anyone you got it from me <laughs> i want to really just address uh, possibly a bunch of aspiring young kids who really want to consider a job uh, as a talent manager what would you say um, would be like the key Uh, attributes that one needs to have what's non negotiable as in terms of attributes um you know the beauty of the job is we don't really need any uh a degree right um if you have decently good communication skills if you think you are street smart if you think you are good in managing people this job is for you the rest you can learn you can read uh knowledge is something that is acquired uh processes in terms of let it be contracts let it be negotiations all of that can be taught but the basic um core of the job is people management paint a picture for me what is a day in the life of jaya so you know i think today i'm i'm luckier because it's been 15 years uh doing this and i can make a lot of choices but for the jaya in the first 5 years of her career you're probably the most i wouldn't say the most hated but on a set uh let it be a film shoot or a brand shoot you are the person who's getting rogered from every side right because by nature a brand or a producer say wants a little bit more if it's that additional half an hour if it's that extra shot whatever it is the talent doesn't want to give it or wants to probably give a little bit lesser than what is there you're the person who's stuck in the middle um so the day is literally just 12 to 14 to sometimes 16 hours of people management um it is about talking to a lot of people who are not only from the industry but are in your vicinity to understand what are people thinking right what are people buying uh why is certain why is a certain movie working or why is a certain d2c brand preferred over something else it's about taking all of those insights as well processing them and figuring out for your talents what is the best way forward and why yeah so what yeah. do you do for you do you get downtime i try and take at least a holiday a year uh that's the downtime uh but yeah travel is my my thing just just taking a flight going and sitting on a beach and at least trying to be as disconnected as possible uh but after as i said after 15 years i wake up to my phone ringing than the alarm uh i think i have more anxiety if i'm i haven't checked my phone for 2 hours so yeah yeah i think i've been chasing you for most of those 15 years for time with all your incredible talent so thank yeah. you for just enabling us cuz god knows we need a good agent to yeah. make the most of this thank, thank you, you so, so much. much thank you thank you for coming thank you